Welcome back guys, I'm Zell and today we're looking at the Isham Blade Works and Wee Knife Company Eschaton Prototype. Alright guys, this one is a prototype, so every number that you see on the pause and read cards or that I talk about is subject to change. From what I understand, this knife is very close to its final production specs. But there are some things that probably will change, a couple of them that I'm sure will change. Nothing that's going to change the look of the knife, but some things that are going to make the knife a little better. So let's get into it. What we have here is a 4.93 inch handle length closed, a 0.51 thickness, and 1.3 on height. Those numbers are important because generally whenever we get a knife that's got a design like this, those numbers grow to big proportions and not here. Uh, we and Elijah Isham have taken the time to make sure that this knife stays thin, stays short, and doesn't gr the handle didn't grow crazy for the four inch blade length. So very good job there. It's just a beautiful thing. And let's get a close look at this. You know, take in some of the details. Now this is a three piece construction. And you know, we got our standard Wii pivot here. It's been milled out on the collar. To fit down in with the design same thing on the other side been milled to fit the design and I kind of like that it looks very nice we have several holes in the handle but it keeps its structural integrity it's very nice we have kind of choils right here it's just a beautiful design and you see those star screws all of those body screws from what I understand, are going to end up being torque screws. Now, I don't know for sure. I hope that those torque screws end up being titanium and anodized just like the star screws are here. Uh, that's my hope for Wee Knife Company is that that's the direction they go whenever they start using more and more torque screws. And let's get a quick look at this blade and then we'll do our size comparisons. And we'll look more at the blade here in a moment. At our size comparisons, we have a Buck 110, of course, and we have a Rat Model 1, and it has a half inch more blade than the Rat, quarter inch more blade, I believe it is, than the Buck, and it weighs two ounces less than either one of them whenever it's the carbon fiber version. This version is 3.92 ounces, so it's about an ounce lighter than this one and more than an ounce lighter than the Buck. And uh, just for fun, we're going to throw up an XM18 because I believe that that's more the class of knife that this Eschaton fits into with our Steelcraft Bodega and our production uh, XM18. And it's lighter than both those knives and has more blade edge than both those knives. But anyhow, we got to look at those. And back to the blade on this guy. And get a good look at that blade. It's got a lot to look at. You look up there, if I can get the light on it right, we've got a swedge. It has three different areas on it. And we've got fullers right here. We've got fullers right here. It has been black coated. And this is probably the most striking version of this blade. And uh, once they black coated it, they sent it back through the surface grinder and revealed our satin flats. And, oh, it's just a good-looking blade. So let's talk about this cutout. And then I'm going to call it one big cutout. And really it isn't, but... I mean, look at that. And this area right here and this area right here are a little thinner than the rest of the blade stock. The blade stock is 4 millimeter, and it's M390. And our blade length is 3.92 with an edge length of 4 inches. If you'd like to know more about why that sounds a little odd, go back to the Zeta review. I explain a little bit better there. Uh, and it's, I don't know, this blade is just a beautiful thing, guys. Now, it is dual ground, and I do want you to get a good look at this area right here. See how this edge trails off. 
that leaves us a little bit of bevel all the way to the very back of that recurve and it is a bit of a recurve so be aware of that for sharpening and this area here is nice and flat now i was questionable about that whenever i first saw the knife and uh elijah isham happened to be there and i talked to him about it and what he told me that this flat area was for close work so you'd have a nice flat area that was easy to control well you know that makes sense and then this slightly kicked up worn cliff with a little bit of a recurve was to hold you in harder materials well that makes sense too my concern was the transition whenever you're dealing with soft materials and uh you know i may have been a little bit over worried about it because once again you look there that plunge grind hooks back and leaves some bevel there and it's just kind of a beautiful thing and what i'm going to do with this is i'm going to take it and cut through this soft material the paper down there and go through that transition you know it's do you get the transition do you feel it whenever you're cutting yes you do and cutting stuff on film is rather hard guys there we go you know you can it just it works is there a bump in its giddy up yes there is a slight bump that you can feel right there but in soft materials it's fine now the other thing that people are going to talk about some reviewers are going to beat the heck out of is that big blade hole they're going to tell you that whenever you cut the cheese you're going to get your cheese all stuck up in there and i don't understand why they're all infatuated with cutting the cheese but uh yeah any soft material like that you're going to get some of it up some of it up there in that blade hole so be aware of that and that's one of the trade-offs you get for having such a cool blade the other thing that is a trade-off is the bevels because they're so short and this blade is four millimeters thick the bevels are going to be wide and that is going to slightly impede your slicing ability over some of your other blades now thankfully elijah has thought about that and he gave us this knife to take care of those tasks and this knife to be the coolest knife on the block but overall the blade is lots and lots more useful than i ever thought it would be it's uh it's very thoughtful design and that's what we get out of elijah and before we get into our pause and read card let's talk about mr isham just a little bit you know elijah is a very young designer he's in his early 20s and he's already designing stuff like this and stuff like the zeta and the megatherium <clears throat> so he's got some design chops guys and it all started whenever he was about six years old he went to an outdoor expo sort of thing with his dad and got a, got to looking at the knives and was interested and then a few year a few years later he started getting into bushcraft and started designing some bushcraft knives neat little thing there one of his early bushcraft designs is uh, very very similar to the todd knife and tool field chopper that we built and gave away you know, a few months ago here on the channel i'll put a link to elijah's uh, instagram down there and you can go dig through that and find it if you want to the thing about elijah though is he is a young guy and he just picked himself up a mill so give him time but there may be some customs coming out of isham blade works and he's gonna make it where he's gonna push us all of us out here making knives all of us out here designing knives elijah is going to make us all have to rethink our design ethos he's not going to make us have to be like him of course not but he's going to have he's going to make us have to rethink things and make sure that we are putting out the best that we can put out because you know, if not he's going to blow us all away anyhow let's move on to our pause and read card and i'll be right back with you all right mechanically this thing is a wee knife we have a standard wee pivot you know sleeve and uh, star screw and we have an inset liner lock 
if I can get some light on that. And it all works good. I'm actually becoming a fan of some of these liner locks that are built like this because you don't have the frame lock over here to get in your way whenever you're opening the knife where, you know, if like a left-hander has a tendency to get your thumb up there on that frame lock, not so here. And the liner lock systems have gotten so much better than they were in years past. Better materials, thicker materials, and just beautiful. And that's the other thing. This thing locks up good and solid, just like every Wii knife. It's not got any problems with lockup. And the action is, as you saw there, beautiful. That light little blade, you just give it just a little, and there it goes, right down home. That is a beautiful thing, especially for a blade that has that much material taken away and that light. From here, we'll get it into Levi's real quick. And sticking it down in our Levi's, you know, I, I fuss about these pointy-ended knives. I'm not going to this time because this one tucks down in there nice and neat. Doesn't have that large amount of knife up above the pocket that work on the pocket as a fulcrum and whack into things. So, very good job on the pocket clip. It is tip-up right hand only. And the one on this prototype is a little tight. I think they're going to do some work on that before the... Uh, pro or the uh, production version goes live. And let's get to ergonomics. Now, you guys want to take bets on what I'm going to say about ergonomics? You know, get them in. Get them in. All right. Now, many of you would think that with some of those edges there that I might be a little fussy about ergonomics. Well, you know, I thought I might too, but you put your hand around this guy and you're locked in. You've got a nice big choil. And there I say big, my thumb fits in it. But, whenever you get your fingers in there, everything just rolls around the way it's supposed to. So for my medium-large hands, this thing fits well. And you do have this fuller that acts as a bit of jimping on the back of the blade. Now, it's not a huge deal whenever you're holding it like this, because you are locked in solid. And, you know, everything is just beautiful. You can get it in all your grips without any issue. The only one that might have an issue would be your reverse grip. And in that reverse grip, kind of pointy right here. But if you need to use that grip, that's going to be fine. And everything's going to hopefully work out in your favor. Now, the other thing you can do with this knife is choke up on it. And this is thoughtful design down there at that edge termination, which is also beautiful. Uh, you got this arc. Well, you can get yourself choked up there. And there, that fuller does turn into more useful jimping and... The only issue I have here is I wish this blade was just a little deeper so that you'd be, you have your finger a little further away from that edge. But if you're doing close work, that should not be a problem. Uh, you should not be sticking your finger hard into anything whenever you're choked up like that. And if you're back here, you're well protected. If that nasty box comes around the corner, you're in good shape to shred that box up. You got a nice point here, and you can shred him up, and no problem. So, overall, guys, what I think about the Eschaton is it's well thought out design by Elijah Isham. Yes, it does lean a little towards style, but even in leaning towards style, Elijah has not forgotten that it's a knife. And he even says that in uh, one of the interviews he's done. He says that you have to remember, at the end of the day, all of these things do the same thing. And you've got to get some style into it to keep people interested. But you've also got to keep the utility in it to keep people using them. And I think he hit the nail on the head there. Many of us get too wrapped up in one side or the other. We get wrapped up in the, uh, oh, that's super cool, look at that fuller, look at that hand rub satin, look at that starburst look, wow. And we stick that knife in our pocket, and even though the bodega is a very useful knife, some others aren't. And Elijah is not only thinking about style, but he's also making sure that his knives are useful blades. And that, my friends, is a beautiful thing. Now, as far as Elijah Isham goes, 
There are going to be several collaborations with custom makers coming up in the next several months. There's going to be more stuff from uh, We Knife Company. We have this one. We have the Zeta, and there's probably going to be more. And it's going to be a beautiful thing. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch Elijah and his designs and watch him grow as a designer and watch him learn and grow as a maker. It's, uh, I don't know, it's just going to be a beautiful thing, guys. And to top it all off, Elijah Isham is a great guy. If you get a chance at a Blade at Blade Show or somewhere else to meet Elijah, uh, be sure to say hi. He is a, a great guy, and we've had some great conversations. And I'm going to have to send these knives back here in a couple days, and that's going to upset me. But that's okay. Uh, he doesn't have any of his own knives right now. They're all laying on my desk, so we've got to get them back to him. Anyhow, guys, I really appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with me, talking about Elijah Isham and his knives with We Knife Company. They are a couple of beauties, and they are two knives that I will own and I will carry. And I put them both up here because I want to close this whole deal out for the time being on Elijah's knives by saying, yes, this knife and this knife, are in my want list and I will end up with each one of these knives and will I carry them the Escaton yes I'll carry it now am I gonna carry it every day absolutely not uh, the short bevels on this knife do not lend it well for a lot of the things I do so uh, I'm just not gonna carry it every day but if I am going out on the town or I'm going somewhere where I'm not doing my usual, absolutely I'm going to carry that thing because it checks all the boxes for defense and it checks all the boxes for doing general EDC tasks. The Zeta, on the other hand, will I carry that guy? Yes, I will carry that guy every day. It will be a general carry for me right in there with my Leong Ma, right in there with my Wii 702. It's, uh, it's that great a knife. It's, it's, they're just beautiful guys. And another thing about both of these knives, whenever the pre-orders pop up on Blade HQ and other places, if you want one of these, you better get in quick. This is not one where you, when the pre-order goes up, you've got two or three days to think about it. Uh, I don't think they're going to be produced in large quantities. And it's one of those deals where, where we generally does... You know, they'll do a production run of a certain knife with X number of knives. And then they go on to the next model. And that first model doesn't come around again for a few months, sometimes a year. So if you want one of these, whether it be the Escaton or whether it be the Zeta, whenever these guys come out, uh, up for pre-order, I mean, you better jump on it. Uh, they should be priced well. You know, they, they're both going to MSRP somewhere around 300 bucks, And, you know, they'll probably sell on the street for a little less than that. So, if you want one, jump in quick. Don't be sitting around thinking about it for a couple days. Anyhow, guys, I really appreciate you stopping by and talking about the Isham Blade Works and We Knife Company Escaton Prototype. It is a really cool knife from a really cool designer and I just really really like this thing guys and if you get the opportunity to get in on the pre-orders for them do it because this is one of those knives that you're not going to want to touch on the secondary market and you guys have a wonderful day don't forget to like share and subscribe and I'll see you next time